The will falls under the abstract realm. It is the desire to do. The willing, on the other hand, is actualizing the will by taking action on the desire. I want to eat is will. I will eat or I will not eat is willing. The dynamics between what you desire and the choice to do it or not to do it is very important when we talk about ethics. It is one thing to believe that being truthful is the best way to behave, but it is quite another to tell the truth. The first is a mental exercise. The second is an act that requires courage. It is so easy to say that we want to be a good person, but such demands not only the desire, but the choice and the courage to actualize that will. We have perceptions of what good is, but when confronted with a situation where the demand to be good is present, we often falter. We lose sight of what is good and we settle on what is convenient to us. So what is moral courage? Rushworth Kidder defines moral courage as the quality of the mind and the spirit that enables one to face up to ethical dilemmas and moral wrongdoings firmly and confidently without flinching or retreating. It is best exemplified not only in choosing to do what is right, but also in choosing not to do the wrong thing. It involves not only the commission, but also the omission of the act. In order to understand moral courage, let us differentiate it from the other pro-social behaviors. How is moral courage different from heroism and helping behavior? In the example provided in What is Courage? Definition, Explication, and Classification of a Complex Construct by Oswald, Greitmeyer, Fisher, and Frey, where five Turks helped a Greek who was assaulted by 20 Nazis, we realize that there is a fear involved in taking action because of the social consequences that might follow in helping. Being discriminated, hated, ostracized, or physically assaulted are just a few of the things that could happen if one decides to help. Aside from the negative social consequences, it is also quite obvious that the Turks are at a disadvantage because they are fewer than the Nazis. However, these circumstances and possibilities did not stop the Turks from helping. These are the critical moments in our morality. It is in these moments where in spite of all the negative things one might experience, one still chooses to do what is right or having the courage to do what is good or choosing not to do what is wrong because it is the right thing to do. Therefore, what differentiates moral courage from other pro-social behaviors are the social costs that are involved when doing an act of moral courage. Unlike helping behavior and heroism where one receives praise after doing the act, in moral courage there are negative social costs or consequences involved. Helping behavior are our everyday acts of kindness when we help our parents in the household chores, when we give food to someone hungry, or when we choose to fight for someone being bullied by someone who doesn't have moral ascendancy over us. As a consequence of these helping behavior, we receive affirmation or praise from those who surround us. There is a positive social consequence. Heroism, on the other hand, is a very similar driving force with that of moral courage. The demand to do good is also high, but its consequences are similar to that of helping behavior. There is a positive social outcome. To elaborate more on these pro-social behaviors, here are some examples of moral courage. So first is Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks was an African-American activist during a time when women and colored people are considered as low-class citizens. While discrimination is still present in the modern days, it was very much apparent or pronounced during Rosa Parks' time. She was arrested for civil disobedience when she refused to give up her seat in favor of a white passenger. While her acts is something Thing that might be considered as heroism in the modern time, it was then an act of moral courage which cost her her civil liberty. Another remarkable act of moral courage is depicted by Atticus Finch in the award-winning novel To Kill a Mockingbird. Atticus Finch is a lawyer who defended Tom Radley, a black guy who was accused of committing rape. Atticus Finch is a white person living in a very white community, and the act of helping Radley was in a way welcoming people to discriminate and ostracize him. But as what he told his children, I wanted you to see what real courage is. Instead of getting the idea that courage is a man with a gun in his hand, it is when you know that you're licked before you begin, but you begin anyway, and you see it through no matter what. You rarely win, but sometimes you do. Too often, we think of courage purely as facing up to our fear. What we miss is how deeply connected our fears are with deeper beliefs about who we are, who we want to be, who we love, and what we wish the world was. It makes our heart 
heart beat faster because of the burning desire for change. This is why when we talk about moral courage, anger plays a very important role, more precisely what we call moral outrage or empathic anger. It is knowing that there is an injustice or a wrong committed and you refuse for such injustice to succeed. But these acts of pro-social behavior do not just happen. While we believe that human is innately good and has the capacity to know what is good, it is important that we cultivate these good behaviors by learning from experience and by surrounding ourselves with good people. Let us also remember that more than hate, apathy is more destructive. When we refuse to help those in need and turn a blind eye on those who are oppressed, then we are allowing evil to thrive.